This frame would be John Cena's frame of choice. The Super Slam. Are you ready for this Sunday night when WWE champ John Cena defends his title in the WWE Super Slam? John here guys and today I'm here with the new Catalyst Machine Works Slam Nasty and this is the Super Slam and look how slam this top deck is. This is one of the thinnest, uh, most slammed frames out on the market. Now traditionally we see these slam frames coming in the form of freestyle but what if we take the low center of gravity, totally slam everything and put it into a premium racing frame. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, is this a little bit of deja vu? Um, does this shape look familiar? And it should because it is very reminiscent of the one of the first Catalyst Machine Works frames I ever saw out on the field, the SL5, which was a super light Norris edition. Uh, if you can see the angle of this top plate being thinner at the back, you know, going uh, in a sharp, angular, aggressive looking stance at the front. Very reminiscent of the Norris edition. That was the first frame that I ever saw out in the, wheel, in the wild when I attended my very first FPV drone race. And I didn't really know anything about Callus Machine Works. I'd watched some of the videos. Uh, this was way back in probably early 2017, but I knew I wanted it. It had that coolness factor and the people flying it were so skilled um, that I wanted to be a part of it, but I just didn't have the budget back then to be able to really afford any of the Catalyst Machine Works frames. That's why this is so significant because this is their very first budget racing frame. That's right. This frame comes in at $49.95, an extremely reasonable price for all of the Catalyst Machine Works design uh, that goes into these things. Now, here is the optional front brace that you can run and I have a couple of the other optional goodies here. But before we get into that, let's take a closer look. This is a very similar, here is my Raging Droner um, that I have been racing. This is the, the build that I've been going for. It is the Emacs Magnum 20 by 20 stack with the Runcan Robin camera and the Hyperlite 2206.5 1722 KV 6S motors. Been going a little bit lighter on this setup and with props, without the fin, um, it comes in right at about 265 grams, which is very light for me. I'm usually closer to 300. So I've been enjoying a little bit less power with these lighter motors, but I wanna see how light I can get this thing. Uh, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and use the same components if I can. I'm gonna have to get creative with this VTX because I don't think there's any way I can sit it on top uh, because of the height. Um, so we'll go through some of those build challenges in the follow-up video. Uh, but what is the angle of this? You can see that the arm um, angle is a little bit similar to the Raging Droner. Um, it's a little bit further in, so it's not as wide. And uh, they are sitting slightly closer to the center of the frame. And then of course the back is a completely different angle. The other thing you notice is that this body is much longer. Now this is a pre-production model. On the production models, the screws, this front portion are all gonna be moved up two millimeters. The, uh, the stack mounting screws are gonna be moved up two millimeters. It's not really something you'll be able to see in this video, but they're, in the testing, they accounted for that they wanted a little bit more distance from the rear 
and a little bit different distance spacing along these arms in order to be able to allow people to run reverse props if they would like. I also have here the mysterious, the legendary uh, <laughs> flip stick. Catalyst Machine Works has made a custom flip stick mount that mounts on the back right there. And this flip stick will allow you to do the same thing as this turtle mode fin, which is to be able to flip your quad over. You can also adjust the height of this as needed. You could cut it down if you didn't want it this tall. At full height, um, you can see that you won't ever have any problems turtle moding with this because it's so tall. But I do wonder if you hugged the very top of corner of a gate, if this might clip it. We'll find that out when I actually get my build up and running. Again, I do have the optional front and rear braces, which I will be installing. Um, and here's my note. I'll give some more notes when I actually get this in the air. Do you need the braces? Because the braces are gonna add a little bit more cost. Here's how I put it. If you wanna try a slammed frame that is light, that is strong, that is gonna have the ultimate performance in the air, if you want a bottom mount, if you don't want a hyper low or a smooth operator necessarily, and you just wanna fly around and have fun, you're probably good to fly without the braces and keep your price low. If you want to dab one racing, um, I would run at least the front brace. And if you're gonna be attending events, if you're gonna be racing through trees, through gates, or if you're gonna be trying to do um, freestyle tricks, hitting gaps, run the braces. Give yourself a little peace of mind. Keep your everything nice and tight and protected. These add a nominal cost, but they add a, a layer of protection for you. Uh, I also have this really awesome SMA mount, which will allow you to run your Axis Stubby at the back. And this is gonna go on the rear standoffs, kind of like that. And then you have ability to have your antennas out right here. These will run just under the prop line, which is a really cool design. Um, I think I'm gonna actually run this because I use the XM Plus receiver, so this will be perfect to hold my antennas. That's typically what we do because we need the ability to switch between left hand and right hand circular polarized antennas at a race. What are some other notes about this? These are these arms are interchangeable between these two models. These are also the same arms that are used on the America, uh, which is really cool. But what do you notice about this? This has one side cut off, so there's only three whole screws. Now, typically, I only run three screws on my quads. On my Catalyst, I do sometimes run four, but on all my other quads, I only ever run three. So this is perfect. It's a little bit of weight savings, a little bit of material savings, and you'll add a little bit of strength by not having that other hole right there. Now, this top plate is thick and very strong. Um, the last top plate frame that I ran was probably a Floss 2.1. This top plate's a little bit thicker. Um, the bottom plate is also very nice and thick. Um, this is a pretty rigid frame. Um, so let's see how it holds up to crashes. I'm guessing that rigidity is going to absolutely translate to some really smooth flight, which is what you're accustomed to. There's also been some slight revisions in the production version to this camera mount. Um, so keep that in mind. I do like that they have been able to create a traditional replaceable arm version of the Norris, kind of a reincarnation, if you will. It's uh, inspired by the retro design, has those styling cues, but it's still something totally different. And this is a different approach for Catalyst Machine Works. Um, you know, those of us that race, we know that when you buy a more premium frame like this that costs closer to $70, that you're buying into something that's gonna fly better. But when you race, you need three of these, four of these maybe. Um, so that extra 20 to 25 bucks, when you multiply it by three or four, does end up being a little bit. So being able to have 
an option on the market for the Catalyst Machine Works design to buy into that ecosystem to get access to all of these awesome accessories um, for such a low price is really a game changer. This will be an opportunity for a lot of you guys that are flying budget frames out there. Spend an extra couple of bucks and get the real stuff, get the real performance. Um, I'm really excited about this thing. I'm gonna get mine built up as soon as I can, get you guys some footage of this thing flying around in the air, and I'm really looking forward to showing you guys what the Super Slam Nasty is all about.